Greetings. Today we're going to look at how a free market for a certain type of product and service can create substantially more improvement and cost reduction relative to markets where the government overregulates or the government tries to intervene between basic market forces. And thus one of the best examples of that is the difference between cosmetic surgical procedures versus surgical procedures that are more of a medical nature, such as heart surgery or kidney surgery or something like that. Something to cure an ailment that you have versus something that is entirely for appearance reasons. So we go to this blog, which is the Carpe Diem blog by Professor Mark J. Perry at the American Enterprise Institute. And he has a post about prices of various cosmetic procedures 1998 to 2021, 23 years. Now here's the thing, all these cosmetic procedures evolved organically. They were not created by the same group of people because they involve very, very different disciplines of medicine. Plus, cosmetic procedures becoming commoditized is a byproduct of an advanced society. If you went back in time to an era where there was only an aristocracy, then the number of people who could afford a cosmetic procedure was so small that there would not be any medical practitioners to specialize in that. In a prosperous society, procedures can become much more commoditized, meaning that thousands or even millions of people can partake in them, and therefore it becomes a very turnkey type of procedure that you just go in, go out, and the practitioner has already done a huge number of these. Now the interesting thing here is, this is the list of procedures procedures. And when we talk about these procedures all kind of came into being on their own. It's not like one group was working on all of these. You can see how different these procedures are. Some are specifically to reverse the visual impacts of aging. Others are specifically to take an attractive woman and make her more attractive in that an average looking or below average looking woman would not get any increment in her appearance from the same procedure. So the procedure is of a multiplicative effect rather than an additive effect. A large number multiplied by zero is still zero. There are other procedures here that are used exclusively by men, such as chin augmentation. I don't think any women ever go for that. And yet there are other procedures here that are meant to take a very ugly person and make them less ugly. In that if an average looking or better than average looking person got the same procedure, it would not make any difference or there would be no scope for that procedure. So only an ugly person, less ugly. Fine, so there is a full spectrum of types of procedures. And we can see here from the table a procedures list, the 1998 price, the number that was done, the 2021 price, the number that was done, and the percent increase in price. And then at the bottom here, we see the weighted average price increase. Weighted is more important than unweighted. So over 23 years, this entire collection of procedures only rose in price by 38.2%. That's well under 2% a year, just a little over 1% a year, in fact. The overall CPI rose 66.2%, which is still low, but higher than cosmetic surgical procedures. And then here you get the other types of healthcare costs, medical care services of all types, 132%, and hospital services, the ones most prone to be covered by insurance because those are high dollar procedures, something that Walmart cannot really offer a competing service for, those have risen 230%. So that's the difference here, 38% versus 230%. Cosmetic procedures are obviously not paid for by insurance, whereas hospital services for healthcare related procedures, like the ones I described before, heart surgeries, kidney surgeries, bone surgeries, joint surgeries, things like that, 230%. Now the insurance product is necessary to prevent catastrophic costs, but it really has to be reimagined in a very, very different type of way. Health insurance should be more analogous to auto insurance in that it's there only for when you have a catastrophic cost. And most people go their entire driving lives without ever really needing their auto insurance. It's only for the instance where there's a million dollars of damage. That is exactly what health insurance should be like. Because we scroll down and look at this article some more, this chart shows how America has kind of defaulted into the worst of both worlds. Out-of-pocket payments were almost half of healthcare costs in 1960, and insurance only covered the other half. Now we're down to 9.4% out-of-pocket and 90.5% covered by insurance. 
It may feel good in the short term that you're only paying your copayment or deductible. Then those costs are cycled up to the system and increase the costs across the system. And that's why some percentage of people in the United States, 10, 15, 20%, have either very poor insurance or no insurance. And that's why this debate is very complicated. Countries like Canada and the United Kingdom have a government health care service. And there's always an argument online between Canadians and UK citizens versus Americans about who has a better health care system. And this is a two variable debate, which is why it's complicated. If you have a good insurance plan, the United States healthcare system is better. If you have weak or inconsistent or no insurance, then obviously being in Canada or the UK is better because you're not left to fall between the cracks, which is one of the tragedies of the US system. So in trying not to have government healthcare, we have this insurance product, which has combined the worst of both worlds because sure, out of pocket has fallen from half to 9.4%, but half of a much smaller number versus 9.4% of a much larger number spread the costs over the system and the bottom 10 or 15% of people effectively don't have insurance and die sooner than they otherwise might and they bear the costs, or do they? That is when, when you're extremely poor, you have some version of government paid health insurance and then the costs of that are high and then borne back to the system. That is why this is a very low productivity sector of the US economy. The solution to this is something that does not involve just copying Canada or the UK because there are a lot of problems in those countries as well. The number of Canadians who come to the US for important surgeries is pretty high. What is needed is modern thought tied to my Atom thesis where you have insurance that is similar to automobile insurance, bronze tier insurance, high deductible, it only pays catastrophic costs, but then Federal Reserve money printing in the form of an Atom dues, a fixed payment directly to people, since money printing has to be done anyway, is of a dollar amount that exceeds the deductible and copayment costs of the auto insurance type insurance plan, the bronze insurance plan. That way you can't say the government didn't give you enough cash to pay for your health care, but that enables a free market in most types of health care. Still not in heart surgeries and things like that, but the other 80-90% of health care costs come down in price because of the free market. I'll have videos detailing this out in a block diagram and so forth. But that is the type of thought that is needed to fix this problem, particularly when we can see that cosmetic surgical procedures have dropped in price by so much relative to hospital services. And this does not even account for subjective improvements in cosmetic surgical procedures. I'm sure the implants of 1998 are of much lower quality than 2021. Now they're much safer, probably better material, all kinds of other side effects and accidents are greatly reduced. The same probably goes for laser skin resurfacing. All of this is much, much more improved despite the lower cost increases or in some cases cost decreases. This is what a free market does and the absolute prices of these are surprisingly low. I bet many of you didn't realize some of these procedures are as inexpensive as they are. I bet some people watching this video are gonna go look into a couple of these as applicable. But this is how the free market can keep healthcare costs down. You just have to prevent catastrophic costs and the direct transmission of central bank money to people in the form of a stipend type payment, which I call the Atom dues, is part of the solution here because then you can have an auto insurance type system for healthcare insurance, but nobody is incurring huge costs out of pocket, nor do you have the bottom 10 or 15% uninsured, and nor do you have the other weird dimension of how your health insurance is tied to your job. If you have a job, you have health insurance. If you lose your job for whatever reason, then you don't have health insurance. This is a huge inhibitor to entrepreneurial activity. A lot of people don't undertake entrepreneurship, not because they need a salary, but because they would lose their higher quality health insurance. Think about that. The hidden cost of that is very hard to quantify, but people in government who make policy just don't think about the missing opportunity cost of that. And that is the problem because when you have an insurance industry and healthcare system with this type of model entrenched, there's too many people who depend on this never getting fixed. That's why this healthcare lobby is extremely powerful because when healthcare is this expensive, tons of people in the ecosystem, from doctors themselves to insurance company providers to pharmaceutical companies, they are minting money to an extreme degree because they are not being subjected to competitive forces that would drive down cost. Now, some of them get cancer too, and then the treatment is very expensive, even though they work in healthcare. But I guess as a group, they're not thinking that far. The predatory mechanism is something to grow accustomed to when you're making so much money so easily, and lobbyists can prevent competitive market forces. Much more could be said about this subject, but this video is getting kind of long. 
So I think we can conclude over here, but some food for thought, and there'll be a link to this article in the description box below, of course. Thank you very much for watching.